Dear students, in this module, I'm going to show you around how the protein structures look like and the various examples that are very pretty to look at. You know that proteins, they fold spontaneously. There is no specific algorithm that can predict this folding process till date. And more so, several forces, they act together to bring about these structures. Four of them I discussed with you and I will mention how much contribution comes from each of these forces as a table down the slides. If you look in this figure, it shows you a funnel. So the option an unfolded protein has like these, they get reduced as they take more and more complex structures. Initially, these chains are just linear polypeptide chains comprising of amino acids and then they take secondary structures and once the secondary structural form is adopted, these secondary structures then come together and make more complex structures. And then these proteins can also make complexes and eventually arrive at the final structure. So this is called a folding funnel wherein an unfolded protein has a lot more choices as compared with a folded protein towards getting folded. Okay, so to move on, there are four types of interactions that describe this process, that determine this process, that govern this process. So these are the covalent bonds, the electrostatic interactions, the van der Waals forces, the hydrogen bonds. And as you can see in the column at right, the energy that is given out due to each one of them. So therefore, you can yourself imagine that a protein would essentially want to make a covalent bond, yes. But once all the possible covalent bonds are formed, then it will try to create as many hydrogen bonds as possible. This will be followed by any possibilities for electrostatic interactions and van der Waals forces. So once the entire protein structure is formed, it falls to the most stable structure with the lowest energy possible. Here you see a protein hydroperoxide resistance protein OSMC and its ID is 1V VLA and you can see the effect of these interactions of these forces and how beautiful this protein is and how it will be performing its function in a biological system within the cells. All of these holdings are spontaneous as I mentioned and that they perform unique functions. So each structure has a unique function that it can perform and nothing else. Here you see cystatin 3 or cystatin C structure and just by looking at this structure you can see that it's a symmetric protein and it is symmetric about the vertical axis and it performs so many functions in the kidney, it's a biomarker for several kidney diseases and so on and so forth. If you're interested in looking at other beautiful proteins, then you can simply go and visit this website and it will give you a list of protein structures that are very pleasant to look at and they perform unique and varied functions within the cells. So to conclude, the protein structures are very complex. And they are formed in a spontaneous moment. Therefore, it is amazing and it is very interesting to see how such complex structures can be formed in such a short span of time. We will investigate in the later modules how to develop algorithms to predict such structures and how to compute the stability of the resulting structures.